You're watching PTV. I want my PTV. I want my PTV. You're watching PTV.
From the San Francisco Bay Area, it's time for PTV Live. And now, here are the stars of PTV Live. Arnie, Doug, Ben, and Sherry. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to PTV Live on Eclipse Day. I'm Arnie. I'm Doug. I'm Ben. I'm Sherry. So Eclipse Day 2024, the last time we had one here in the country was seven years ago. 2017. I had a friend that went up to Oregon and they sat in a park and the the moon and sun, of course, everything the way it's supposed to be. And, Did anybody uh, here actually physically get totality actually was in the side of the eclipse? Yeah, let us know. Let us know in the comments below. Yeah, let us know in the comments below. Uh, I know. Because to us, it was like, eh. So, Ben, Sherry, did you happen to see it in live at all? I did. I I was driving on the freeway at, at the time that we were supposed to be at 30 some odd percent here in California. No, I did. I watched it with a pinhole on a piece of paper oh, in you? the entryway. Yeah. Oh, with oh the very good. Window on the floor. Yeah. No, that's cool. Oh, and, and in Canada, they had total... Uh, total totality. That is fantastic. The Daniel. total eclipse of the heart. I can't <laughs> stop thinking that stupid well, song. <laughs> you know, the Orlando International Airport said that uh, they didn't have the full eclipse there, but they did see this. They saw sunny eclipse from Magic Kingdom in oh, Florida. God. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> brother. <laughs> so, oh, Paul had 80%. Deborah, Deborah was in central Indiana and she said it was unbelievable. Oh, that's fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, we've got nothing. Yeah. They, it, 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 they are an amazing thing to, to see. It really means that, you know, science, how we can figure out when it's happening at the exact time. Mm -hmm. That's amazing how we use yeah. capability. Yeah. And plus this that, guarantees the earth is not flat. By the way. When it was a, when it was done in 2017, I was given a pair of the Eclipse glasses to look at it, and there's actually a cross design on the side on the arm of the glasses, and it's it shows the date of today, and they knew this seven years ago. Of course, it's amazing. They know about eclipses decades, ahead. and they say the next one will be in 20 years. Yeah, yeah. here in North America somewhere. Yeah, right? sometimes 40, 44, 45. I mean, it happens somewhere. quite a, a lot on Earth, but for us, you know. Yeah, I was listening to a guy on the news, and uh, he was being interviewed from Buffalo. And being up in northern New York, they were supposed to have totality there as well. But I guess they had some overcast skies mm -hmm. and... Yeah. northern new york so i don't know that he got it but that's his seventh eclipse that he's actually witnessed oh how and old he's well he said his first one that he saw was with his father in the 50s oh my so, god oh yeah, he's older, older, he's okay an older he's, he's well, pretty much interesting. up there dreamer in the 70s dreamer. or something almost the dark of night <laughs> and the birds all got silent well, yeah, well, of course it was. I mean, there was it was interesting because I was watching. Uh, that is the, cool, Deborah. I was watching the news on it about it, and there was um, a group of scientists working with National Geographic, and they had been studying bats in a certain cave for the last <laughs> few days to see how they would react, uh -huh. and they were waiting for it to go total, totally dark to see how they would react. But I never did see what happened. I have to go back and look for it. Well, I I heard at the Dallas Zoo that a flock of flamingos all huddled together in the center of a lake. And I guess penguins were freaking out. They all huddled really close together, wondering what was going on. No, they were saying a lot of, you know, it, it well, yeah. does a number on animals yeah. because it, you know, it, they don't understand what's happening, no, but they know it, it's not normal. Yeah, it exactly. sets them up. So they go into protective mode. Yeah. Well, we have an eclipse of our own right here, so uh, we uh, decided. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's so it's eclipse it's day, so I thought, you know what? Why not? Let's go ahead and just do it. We could have found a different flavored of uh, sun chips, and there's a thing at Target called moon cheese. 
And if we had our act together, we could have done a taste test of moon cheese, which is like a puffed cheese, like a crisp. <laughs> or find a sun chip that is a flavor that, because I like sun chips. But you could have had the moon cheese covering the sun chip. No, just eat the moon and the sun separately. I like the, I like the eclipse that Jim sent us. Yeah, I do too. Oh, the Oreo. That was why I did the Oreo on our thumbnail. I, yeah. By the way, Benji says he didn't see the eclipse because it was eclipsed by his ceiling. I was on the couch. <laughs> I well, was doing a bunch of stuff, so not happening. All my, I could... husband, my husband saw the Beatles impersonators. Janae had mentioned that. And he said they sounded just like the Beatles, but he said they were, you know, it was they were okay. impersonators. Yeah. What does that have to do with the eclipse? Here comes the sun. Singing Here Comes the Sun <laughs> by the Beatles. Um, yeah, busy okay. with the studio stuff. Benji has been working diligently at the studio. But um, anyway, we, uh, we decided to go ahead and do a little bit of a celebration for Eclipse Day. And uh, I, I came up with this. <laughs> So Doug just went to go get some ice. Uh, that's one thing that I don't have because it's a little warm and I think we should have the ceiling fan on. Uh, anyway, uh, we're doing an Eclipse Martini and instead of just a standard martini, Doug and I are going to share the cocktail. And we have these little mini martini glasses. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, these came from uh, a friend of his that passed away. Uh, she did parties and uh, she would have all sorts of little party sized glasses like this. She had everything. Yes, she did. Yep. She did. So uh, let me see. We didn't see them all. I'm going to see if I can get the cocktail cam going. And uh, there we go. Uh, so, cocktail cam. We're doing an Eclipse Martini. Let me go ahead and start by putting ice in the shaker. Okay, there we go. All right. Now, um, is that okay? Yeah, let's focus okay. This recipe calls for two ounces of vodka, so we're going to go ahead and start with that. All right, it's supposed to be gin, but he was went whisked out. I'm... Not really a gin fan, so you know, people do vodka martinis instead. And I'm gonna start by putting actually in the fresh squeezed lemon juice. So here we have lemon juice. I'm gonna put that in the glass, and then I'm gonna pour two ounces of vodka and put that in the shaker. You're really going through the vodka, that bottle's almost empty. <laughs> bottle like two years two, three, two, three. i'll buy another one because i've got one just like it in in the cupboard and i don't use it yeah you know what we rarely use vodka only for making drinks here on the show so doug <laughs> train that what here train napkin okay so um we also have a quarter ounce of agave nectar a quarter ounce of creme de violette Half an ounce of lemon juice, which is already in the glass, and half an ounce of Sambord, Chambord, Chambord. which is a, a, like a dark raspberry liqueur. So we're going to go ahead and start put, putting those together. And oh, you needed to read? That's why you did that? Yes, exactly. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the quarter ounce of agave first so that we can rinse out what's left of it in the bottom of the little mixing Because it's cup. very viscous. It is. It's a little sticky. So we'll start with that. Ants love that stuff. Oh, ants just love anything. <laughs> I pissed them off yesterday. Really pissed them off yesterday. We're doing gardening and I pulled a weed and they just exploded in one of our beds. Hey, let me like, try and oh. just... <laughs> I'm like, oh. Yeah, there we go. Now you get the top of the glass. All right. Now, half an ounce, half an ounce each of the creme de violette. And the lemon juice. Lemon no, juice. no, it's a quarter ounce of this one. And half an ounce of the Chambord. So we're going to put a quarter ounce of Violette. That needs to be washed out. It's crusty. Ugh. What's that? The creme de Violette bottle needs to be cleaned. At those oh. Yeah, it's all crusty. 
it's like, see? Well, like, yeah. it oh, could be the- worse. It could be like that ketchup bottle that I saw the little girl wiping <laughs> with her mouth at the, the oh. diner at Woolworth. Oh, that's true. That was years ago. Ugh, that was okay, gross. This, this is a, a fancy bottle. It's Chambord. This is the uh, raspberry liqueur. And then it takes half an ounce of this. So let me put that in. That's pretty cumbersome to hold and pour. Yeah, it's not an easy bottle. All design. But that's uh, typical of the French, though. You know, most likely I've been always told that they believe in form over function. So, okay. Anyway, here we go. Everything is in the shaker. It's not a very big drink. No, it's not, which is why we have two small martini glasses. And that's I'm going to shake this up. But what if somebody wants it stirred and not shaken? You can do that. You can do whatever you want. You can stir it. I got rid of the crust. The thing is, is that if you stir it, the agave nectar is not going to get around all of the uh, liquid. It's going to just get stay in a sticky mess. So here, let me go ahead and pour these now. And you can see it's a cute little glass. More like a double shot. Yeah, it's just a little martini glass. I'll top that one off a bit. And that's it. That is the Eclipse Martini. Now I'll just wait for Doug to get back here so that we he and I can share it together. Did he take away the bottle that he had cleaned so it doesn't attract ants in your room? I, be- I believe so. So... Uh, okay. He's coming now. He really hates those little bugs. Oh, well, yeah, we, we do. Oh, that's very unattractive. Here you go. There you go, an eclipse. That's not... Oh, it's an eclipse. You're not supposed to see it. You're just supposed to drink it. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah, it is actually. It's, it's, very... it's, it's not bad. Fun. Yeah, very, very good. Scaringly good. Engine- yeah, it is. It is an interesting color. Oh, it's very unappetizing. It's uh, no, it's not unappetizing. It's like tea. It looks a little like um, it's not quite purple. I know what it was probably red. was. It was the agave. I don't know, but it's still, it's really good. But it is a good little cocktail, so we can. Sit- it's very Fraser glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh no, too. Paul! I'm so sorry. They have ants now. Oh my gosh! Oh, so sorry about that, Paul. You know what? You could always use a little diatomaceous earth. That will help. <laughs> uh, kind of. <laughs> okay, we you have a our... torch to them. That'll help. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and do a movie review. Let's take a look at the Hallmark movie. <laughs> Okay, Blind Date Book Club. A bookstore owner finds love and direction in life after agreeing to review a famous author's new novel in her Blind Date with a Book Club. This one stars Aaron Krako and Robert Buckley. Uh, Ben, give us a quick synopsis. What did you think of it? Uh, Or give Uh, us a quick synopsis. A quick synopsis. Uh, The author in question is having writer's block issues with an, the next novel in his series of novels and his publisher agent or his agent is getting really antsy because the publisher really, really wants the next book immediately. The guy's got just a few weeks to come up with it and he wants to try and push his new novel that he came up with instead of the one that's in the series that the publisher wanted no one wanted to read this book so he heard on npr or an npr like station of a town 
uh, in, well, a, a bookshop in Nantucket that had this blind date book club kind of set going up where they would wrap books. You wouldn't know who wrote it until you opened up the, uh, uh, yeah, until you opened up the package. He went into this town and met up with the book seller who, or the, uh, the bookstore owner played by Aaron and they hit it off right away. I, the, the chemistry between the two of them was so palpable from the very beginning. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. But, very but he had to convince her to get the book read in the book club because he had published it, self published it under a pseudonym. So instead of his famous name, he misrepresented himself and that all unwound at the end of the film. But overall, the the ramp up to that one scene where everything came apart the great the great path that this movie took was very satisfying for me i i like that the uh the bookstore owner and the author hit it off and they actually uh had a kiss Two thirds of the way through the film, which is unlike a Hallmark movie, which usually has them kiss at the very end. And believe me, they did do that at the end. But it it was kind of satisfying to see them acknowledge that they were interested in each other two thirds of the way through the movie. Hit or miss will do a kiss counter if they have a lot of kisses in the movie. Uh, this one I thought was going to start. It only had two kisses in the movie. I thought it was going to start encroaching on the kiss counter aspect of their show, but it didn't. Uh, I really appreciated the connection they had almost immediately. And uh, the story started off very quickly. It didn't meander. It didn't lang. It wasn't a point of languishing. Uh, I, I, their chemistry was very good. Actually, all the chem all the characters, there was no hissing. There is no uh, hard to get uh, the whole, you know, where she has animosity and you, that kind of goes yeah. on for a little yeah. while. It, it was just work. very that smooth. Didn't happen. Yeah. It was very old timey Hallmark. I mean, this it was, it, it was it was a really well paced film. There was no death. There was no no, yeah, no Moby Kid. There I was would, nothing. It was actually it was perfection. I gave it a ten. Yeah, I, I loved every it, bit of it. I had recorded it on my Hulu DVR. And I was able to skip through the commercials quickly. And when I looked that I only had 30 minutes of the movie left, I was amazed because the the, it, the story just moved along so quickly. And I, too, gave it a 10. It was a fun watch, and I would highly encourage anyone to watch it. This is actually one of the first films in a very long time that reminded me of old-time Hallmark. Old -time um, yeah, it, yeah, I gave it a 10. My only gripe is they need to get a hairdresser for Aaron Krakow. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I, thought, I was thinking, it wasn't see, greasy. I was thinking I mean, the same thing. There was this one scene with she and Robert and she looked fine. I, I, she, he looked, he looked good. And then she did. She was like a mess with her hair. And then her, every movie she's been in, even in When Calls the Heart, her hair is a mess. Her <laughs> aunt, there was a problem because her aunt looked great in the movie, but then she had her hair. That, yeah, definitely needs something to do with her Well, hair. she chopped it. And then in the, the When Calls the Heart, it's long. No, but, she it's this season she cuts it. Oh, she waxes it. At least it doesn't look greasy because that was at one time it looked like she took a shower <laughs> and it looked all greasy. Well, we had and the same was, problem uh, with her. In a Christmas movie this past Christmas season. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Richard, the Orlando guy, wrote, this was a return to form for Hallmark circa 2010. Absolutely. Yeah. It had all the perfect tropes. There was no misunderstanding, even though there was a little change. They had their little drama. They're in this cultivating... The, um, oh, yeah. She yeah. Has Look what John said. When... <laughs> The hair. Yes, she does have that messy look. What did you say? When cuts the hair. Oh, when cuts, when cuts the hair. Awesome. Yeah, but at least she didn't look dumpy or you know sad. And she looked. She looked she great. It's just her hair needs help. Now a lot of the movies uh, have this problem of a very tortured misunderstanding. Oh, uh, I this hate one. Those. 
the misunderstanding was just simply uh, the ruse that they had, and uh, it just happened it, really it, quick. It, it just and happened. He said, and then she told him, "I need." She told everyone in the store after the event, "I need everyone to go." And he said, "Well, what can I do to help?" He says, "No, I need everyone to go." So, but it wasn't like a drama kind of thing. She just needed to reassess. But th but there was not like they were fighting. I hate the fighting. There was no death, no children. And when you get those three for me, that's the trifecta for a perfect Hallmark movie. <laughs> Because I hate the where they drag the drama out or the misunderstanding. He just said it. Uh-oh. You know, yep, there's this, there's this. And it kind of all happened in one scene. It was this, there was a, oops, I, I agree with you. And then it went on. The dialogue and the writing was too good for this one to leave any of those bits unchecked. No. I agree. Perfect. It was actually a very well-crafted film. It, yeah. yeah. The best one in a very long time. The whole book club, she was very convincing. He was now, a was it, actor. Was it a different director, producer than a lot of the more recent ones? I actually, actually, I don't know. For that information, I usually go to uh, Hit or Miss Hallmark Movie yeah, Reviews. They'll deal with it. They go into depth about the writers and also the director and other experience that they have. And uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it to them for that one. But I didn't go to that. But hello, Jim. Jim's show tomorrow night. Can we get cool. some more sunshine, please? College is about kids going in debt. 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Yeah, so you'll want to watch him. For his kids getting show. excited, they're going into debt. But this movie definitely a return to the old time Hallmark. Oh, I want to watch ago. it again. Loved it, absolutely loved it. We're going to watch and it. We want to watch it again, and yeah, I gave it a ten as well. So I thought it it was just it was really good. I mean, you want to read a book? It was super creative. Yes, you know what? It was it realistic. Did, too. It made me want to read a book. <laughs> Wasn't it feel like it was real? All this was realistic. Like there's such a club. Nothing looked oh, far-fetched. <laughs> Leave that? that series alone. I will I'm say like that Aaron needs to stay in the When Stalls the Car series. Oh. Not really a fan of hers overall. But she really... She was fine. She was fine with this role. It did a very good and job. Richard, I like that series. I actually read the books as a, as a young woman. The whole series of the books. And How long have those books been out? They've been around for a long, long right. time. And the long. Harlequin? No. With Fabio or something? What do you No. <laughs> no. <laughs> they're written by they're written by a woman by the name of Jeanette Oke. 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 Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, I just e. There's a series of four or five of them. I just want Read Judy yeah. Bloom, you know. <laughs> you know. Just get the classics out. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. <laughs> well, Blind Date Book Club, we highly recommend oh, it. Was... Definitely. Oh, all right, everyone. Yeah. Have we're gonna take a quick break here. Got yeah, a couple things to clean yeah. up. So uh, we'll be right back. You're watching PTV Live. We'll be right back. We cut the cord a few years ago, but we missed Hallmark Channel. That's when we found Friendly TV. Friendly TV has nearly 50 channels in their lineup, including Hallmark Channel, Lifetime, and Game Show Network. Plans start at $7.99 per month with no commitment. You may also choose to pay annually. That's what we do. We have the classic plan. Hallmark Movies Now is also available as an add-on package starting at $5.99 per month. Go to try.friendlytv.com and start your plan today. Watching PTV. 
Welcome to the heartbeat of Orlando, where style beats the Sunshine State. Express your love for Orlando with our casual line of clothing, celebrating the iconic 407 area code. Feel the vibe, wear the pride. 407 Original Brand Apparel, available at theorlandoguy.com. say they want your business, but when you finally buy a ticket, not all airlines act like it. At Alaska Airlines, we do more than promise good service. We go out of our way to deliver it. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. The 80s uh, real that was one of my favorite commercials in the 80s. I oh, love yeah, that exactly. commercial. Sherry, yeah. what you've got there? I've got the series. <laughs> the Judy Bloom series that Tom. The Judy Bloom? <laughs> no, Jeanette when calls Oak. the heart. When comes the spring, when hope springs new, when breaks the dawn. Oh. Oh. It was That's written it. in nine copyright is 1983. Okay. She wrote those and they made a movie or a series that goes on for it started as a movie and then they picked it up as a series. Wow. And I had not read the book books in years, so I I probably should go back and reread them to see what it's like with the um, the show. As long as you take them out of my room to read them, I'm fine. Jerry Richard says, "When breaks the wind?" Uh, <laughs> no, that's are they kind of mom. sad, or are they kind of upping, or is there deep and full of estrogen? Because I don't do that. They're like the show. <laughs> Yeah, I've, no, never, fine, I've never uh, seen that show. I love Jim, that show. To be honest, that commercial was for Alaska Airlines. It ran on the West Coast. Oh, yes. It was a big one in the 80s. They did a whole series of them. We'll show another one sometime because that one was also funny. They they used the same campaign, uh, the same advertising agency as Wendy's at that time. Remember the Where's the Beef campaign? They did. Yeah, it was very we, have, we have a church choir very dude smooth. that likes yeah. this. So we did it. <laughs> Back yeah. at you. I'm hoping that one of the villagers that, that watches our show really likes that because that was one of his favorite commercials back in the 80s. So anyway. Uh, oy vey. Okay. It is time for more crap delivery. All right, Ben, I'm going to focus on you since you're the one that has something to show. So yeah. I thought we have something. <laughs> I actually got a new electric crepe maker today. Oh, great. My old one is, I was using it yesterday and I was like, mm, maybe, I don't know. Cause I've got over a hundred crepes that I'm going to have to make within the next couple of months. Yeah. That's a lot of crepes. Oh, that is a lot of crepes. Crepe and I, I party, like, like the crepe paper. <laughs> You're actually talking to physical food. Yeah, yeah the food. I'm doing uh -oh. I'm doing uh, saltim boca crepes tomorrow night. Mm. Okay. That comes with ham, Swiss cheese, okay. and so Ben, what did you get? Okay, this microphone is a Blue Yeti. We've been using it on the show for. You want to turn it around? Yeah, turn around. We turn can't around. Hear we you. can't hear it. Oh, believe it. Yeah, the sound is on that side. Bi you need to be biased. There you go. You need to be biased. Okay. Uh, anyway, this is a Blue Yeti, and I've had this for close to five years. And off and on, Arnie and Doug would complain about not being able to hear us on our end or something along those lines. And then I started getting complaints from people saying, You sound fuzzy during conference calls with work that I would take here at home. So I thought, you know what? It might be time to invest in a new microphone. So with that in mind, and there it went. What? Yeah, can we can hear you. No, we can hear you. It was a little fuzzy though. You gotta move it in front of you. The one thing about the microphone, you have to speak in it. It's, it's right here in front of me at the end of the table. Now we, now we can hear it. Yeah. 
this is my new Blue Yeti. Uh, okay. I, I, you didn't I clean replaced. the connectors or blow it out or vacuum it? No. Okay. I oh, just, the dishwasher's done. <laughs> it's just, you bought another crappy Blue Yeti? No. <laughs> you should have consulted with him. <laughs> Sound is everything. <laughs> this, is, this is what works for us, and I'm fine with it. So it's what I'm going with. <laughs> And that was a two dollar super chat from Gene G Jr. Thank, Thank you so you. much for the super chat, Gene. Thank Appreciate you. it. <laughs> okay. okay, so you got a microphone. Yeah, microphone. And, and that arrived uh, last Friday, I believe. So I got my fix. So Friday, I had my in person networking event. There was an estate sale. I was so happy. And it was the first time we did an estate sale that he was more excited than I was. He got more crap. Yeah, I did. But so, I, it was, oh, we just needed a bag. This I bag, found this in no, the garage. No, they, they gave this to us because um, well, I we, grabbed we didn't come with a bag. So they gave it to us and said, here, just go ahead and use it. And uh, so this person croaked and they had the whole Hallmark series of something. So this is a box from Hallmark. It is... The night before Christmas, it's the 1997 membership kit. The and whole thing. It's in there. Everything is in there. So, oh, um, wow. Hi. Yeah, so uh, we, we went I actually ahead kicked and, uh, it. I didn't know where I was walking, and I, there was some crap in the garage. And I kicked it, and I'm like, oh, this is a cool box. I picked so it that, up, and I lifted it. That I'm was like, part of the <laughs> Hallmark. Now, uh, for those that follow us regularly, you know about our Christmas, our Christmas forest, and how we have... Uh, 101 Dalmatians treat. Well, years ago, McDonald's did a promotion. They gave away 101 toys that are on the tree. When they did that, they also gave away snow globes. Well, they didn't give them away. You had to buy them. But Yeah, more crap. Mine. I now have the whole collection of the snow globes for the, to put on the tree. Yeah. I got rid of all of mine. Well, that sucks. We have them now. We also found uh, a couple of ornaments from Starbucks. Way back when. From 2005. Yeah, almost. Ooh. Mark ornament. So, and then, can you go grab it from the shelf? Which one? There's one more thing. Which one? This box. Oh, yeah. That was cool. Uh, okay, so. There was a spring ornament that was available back in the 90s from Hallmark that featured Mickey Mouse it's called a velocipede. It's a tricycle. Well, they were and doing. They had. It was just a small ornament, and then those ornaments were based off of larger pieces that Hallmark sold Large. as a whole collection of classic kitty cars. The kitty car section that came in the late '90s into the 2000s. These suckers are really expensive, so they made ornaments of it, and we got the full size of this die cast. Ooh. Yeah, brand just, new, still cellophane. So that's that's what came in the box. Yes, yeah. but there was all the kitty cars. She had nine boxes of giant ones, and you can't really see it, but these yeah, are really two. Uh, that's Snoopy, Tupperware. Right? Snoopy, Snoopy cookie cutters. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So uh, we're very excited. I about got a Pyrex it. dish, an odd shaped Pyrex dish. This, a train sign, and a bunch of other crap. The and I mean nine boxes. She had all the kitty cars, but not the yeah. kitty car he wanted. He wanted the light blue one. And I we could not find it. So I don't know why she didn't have that, but she had doubles of some other ones. And were, are yeah. those the ornaments or were the die cast the larger versions? Large ones. I mean, some of the cars were about this big. Yeah, they were the detail. Fifty dollars way back when. Did you get any of them? No. Just the Velocipede. Yeah, just, okay. just the Mickey one. The only one, like... the only one that I was looking for was a, a cop or the original of the uh, the first in the series that they did of the ornament from 1994, the blue kitty car. Yeah, I wanted that, but I the larger it. classic kitty car was not part of the collection. So mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's too bad. Yeah, so it's something I may look for a, occasion uh, but eventually. It was awesome. I mean, this one he's like, "Oh, well, there's all the kitty." She even had the kitty card signs from Hallmark. Yeah. I mean, she had the little signage. Yeah. She had all the little figurines that make the city, I guess. Did she wear one? Huh? 
Did she work for him? No. <laughs> Obviously, she did something. There was some quilting. I think that stuff all went. She had a sewing machine. Um, but we went into that room. There was some old fabric, but I didn't think anything was there. He was a CHP officer because there was a lot of CHP stuff. Um, but it was in Concord and I mean, we hit paper dirt in this one, but the Hallmark one was really, really nice. And I'm like, what are these McDonald toys? Mark is asking if they have liquid in them still. He had these and pitched them and then now we've got them back. This thing is still, uh, it's still in its original packaging. It was never oh in box. Everything she had was all in the original packaging. Like I said, I had a set of those, but that was because Jeff collected Dalmatians. He was, he was my kid who liked one hundred and one Dalmatians. And if um, you look at it, you it, will see their heads are above water. Let me let me go ahead and uh, focus here. Oh, yep, you got some water there. The liquid tended to evaporate out, but yes, there's still some here. It's more for the nostalgia. I mean, yeah, stuff is thirty years old. <laughs> What's the date on that? It uh, is thirty. This years. is from nineteen ninety six. Okay. Uh, actually, that would be original McDonald's water. Yeah. <laughs> those those were trinkets from McDonald's in 1996. But yeah, the water is still in them. Yeah. No, there were four uh four snow globes in no, all. No, no, I, I mean like two ninety nine each. So, they were some, they were they were like a dollar ninety nine each at the time. Wow. They were not that expensive. No. So we could put it around the bottom of the tree or put them in or... Yeah, they'll probably sit inside the tree somehow, but they're adding to the, the nostalgia. But that was, it was, it was fun. I haven't had one in all this calendar year. Yeah. But it was so pay dirt. What we ate, that's one of these things that uh, Richard, <sighs> Richard said, what have you been eating? He's always asking, what did you eat this week? What did you eat? So uh, what did we eat? Here, here we go. It started... Jeez. <laughs> This was on Thursday. Dang. Thursday was National Burrito Day, but I ended up doing just a fajita taco kind of thing. So Doug grilled up some peppers and onions, and I smeared on some uh, some refried beans on the tortilla as well with the uh, chicken that we had. But that was the the fajita vegetable mix. Doug does an excellent job. I they're know, cooked they're pretty good. much the way that Chipotle does them. Oh, and they're not salty. Oh, so good. Yeah. This was the next... This was the next night, I believe. On Friday it was night, salad night, we did a salad, and we just grabbed some stuff from the refrigerator, just leftovers, and threw together lettuce and spinach. There was some it's pecans not dripping and, dressing and cheese. People. There <laughs> was uh, chicken in there, some dried cranberries, kind of a mix on a turkey cranberry salad kind of thing. So that was delicious. <laughs> that had our old Caesar dressing. Then we went traipsing around on Saturday, which you're going to know about that one. You'll hear about this, yeah, because we were there with uh, Sherry and Ben and Sherry's husband, Tom. We went to Huckleberry's. Doug had a po' boy sandwich. Of well, a box of shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> Brian mask as a sandwich, and I fling two-thirds of it off my sandwich. And then I had a, a grilled chicken sandwich there, and you can see it was very juicy. And, and I also had a side salad with their huckleberry vinaigrette dressing. And I, you, it's there on the side. I just kind of like dipped in it. But it was delicious. This was Saturday night, I think. Leftover mac. Leftover mac and cheese. This we, was there when we got back. We had some leftover Brussels sprouts and some cauliflower rice. We just threw together some turkey a la king and just, that, I, was, that was dinner. Screwed up with the plating and we just used a lot. Now, last <laughs> night, on the other hand, Doug has been doing some research and found a recipe that he uh, he kind of improvised this one. Pretty much, yeah. I, met, I mean, I improvised. He that. took he took the recipe that was there and just changed it. And so we started with a pound of uh, fresh mild Thai sausage that we picked up at the farmers market on Saturday, and uh, got that all cooked up. Then he started to put together his mirepoix. The uh, celery the onions and carrots take out the meat and at, at the bottom you see a lot of this dark stuff fond and also the uh, oil that just came out of the sausage threw in everything and started to saute the onions and celery and carrots and you Fatty, also fat fat yeah so, that, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a all lot, the oil is from all of a oil. lot of deliciousness there then it just did some seasonings and some pepper uh, then you also went ahead and you chopped up some, uh, well, there's the carrot. 
you started to chop up some mushrooms as well. You put that in. in, So the mushrooms go in after you chop them up. And uh, let's see. Yeah. Oh, seasoning, of course. More seasoning. A little garlic. A little granulated garlic there. Um, And Not too much. There he is. He's chopping mushrooms. And uh, yeah. Actually... Mushrooms are sure expensive. You know what? No, they're not. When you buy them the way we do at the Frugal Hoosier or Winco, you can pick up mushrooms for under a dollar. Oh, those mushrooms were a dollar thirty-three. Yeah, so for five or for six five mushrooms. mushrooms. So yeah, you just buy what you need and you can afford it. Put everything back after you've sautéed the vegetables so that they start to sweat and they're nice and sort of soft. Then you start a little more uh, seasoning with paprika. And then you also put in some Italian seasoning as well. Now this, this is where I he thought takes... it was going to help. This was the technique she had. It was stupid. Yeah. Cannellini beans. <laughs> you take a can, you take some of them, pour some of them into a Vitamix. And then, well, you drain them first, of course. I don't like bean snot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. I, it's slimy. So you're, she said to make a creamy, and you fight a mix. All it did is just made up more dishes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. It didn't make a creamy. But that's just that's cannellini beans. That's that's that with a little probably little needed chicken broth. the whole can. Uh, but then you put in some more of the broth because it's a soup, so you want more broth there. Then add the rest of the beans of two cans. Stir it up. And just let it simmer for about 10 ish, 10 15. It got to a nice, nice boil. Well, he threw in some fresh thyme too. We had it was such a very ratatouille moment. We have a, a, a little plant of fresh thyme. And then you wilt some spinach in it as well. And I'll, I'll tell you, this, this dish turned out even better than we had hoped. And Mark, you're saying that looks delicious. Indeed, it is delicious. This is one of the best soups. We've made a lot of different soups here at, at PTV, but this is one of the best soups that Doug has ever made. That is a sausage and bean soup. And uh, I was going to put kale in it because, you know, <laughs> you could put kale in it. It won't taste bad. But it was, it was good. It was went very fast after we did gardening. Yeah, we did some gardening on um, speaking of, you know, let's go ahead and get to that because, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that. Uh oh. Oh. Video file not found. It's not found. Whoops. I had the eclipse. No, it's a a hard drive thing. So uh, I pissed it off. That's probably what happened. What's going on is I, the hard drive that I use for doing a lot of the, um, a lot of the work here for PTV Live, the hard drive was just about full. So I had to reformat, I had to format a new hard drive, and that particular file did not get transferred over. So. Apologies on that. That's my fault. I I had checked everything before uh, the hard drive. Because yeah, he said, out. let's do a hard drive. And I'm like, oh, because all this bad idea. Richard says, Grok predicted this. Sorry about not having stuff queued up. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Grok is the new AI engine at Twitter. So uh, anyway, so this <laughs> happened. What did? What happened? Well, there was a sale at Target. Ben sent me this picture. <laughs> Peeps were still only 70% off? No, this was like five days after Easter. Uh, and it it's it shows what isn't what it isn't. And that is they had peeps over on the right, but I wanted to get a picture of what they had in front of the sign that said it was on clearance. <laughs> so it was more than just one peep that was being clearanced out. There was a lot there still. Did you stop? I, up? I picked up a bag of uh, the small peanut butter cups. Oh, okay. Well, like Doug mentioned, we went to an estate sale. I got my estate sale sale fix. The thing is, even at an estate sale, we were able to find Mod Podge. Oh, yeah, it was on the counter in the garage. (laughs) Was it really? Yes, it is. It It was, was it upstairs or it was in the garage? I think it was in the garage. It was in the garage. Yeah, everything was in the garage. Yeah, it was there in the garage that we found that one. So that was pretty funny. And then we went to an outlet sale. 
We did. Yeah. Now, the outlet sale was in a town called Tracy, which is out in the Central Valley. But we visited their historic downtown. And that's... They have an amazing train station. <laughs> you can go potty there and not have any problems. <laughs> yeah, we found that out. That found that to be very true. Oh, my goodness. That's right. Richard, that's right. That's the Mod Podge moment. Oh, he get his Mod Podge. Okay. Well, apparently that's on the hard drive, too. I I can transfer it. <laughs> I'll have Don't to do. I see that off. But you see, that was just a last minute thing. So I, I, that was not planned. I don't know what's going on with that, but I'll have to figure out what's going on there. Anyway, so we went to uh, the outlet. This is where we went. We went to the Gear Deli Out Factory Outlet. Ben, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, well, it's out in the middle of nowhere. This big warehouse off some street off the freeway and they had some really really good prices on stuff they had the brownie mixes that they were selling five boxes for 20 bucks yeah i picked up one of each that they had and we're going to do a tasting of those at some point in a future episode of my show now but we, we went to the frugal hoosier on sunday mm -hmm. and we saw a gear deli mix there and it was nearly four dollars for that one yeah. And the thing is, that was the sale price. So you know that they're yeah. usually more expensive than yeah. that. They're okay. usually 5 to $6 for yeah. those boxes. They're more so. like 5 I'm pushing 5 bucks. Yeah. But I, I, you know, I, they had the, all five varieties that they offer right there. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to do this. So I got them all. Oh, fantastic. Well, we're going to be baking those up, I'm sure. But uh, so... That was the outlet sale. And then we also, um, just a quick backyard update. Doug and I were out in the backyard yesterday evening uh, as the sun was going down. And sure enough, there are lots of weeds all over the yard, even though they could be there's rock and there's decomposed granite, the weeds will get everywhere. So we have to go through and now spray vinegar on all those things and get rid of it but that's going to be happening we pulled all the weeds that were from the garden of course because we didn't want vinegar in there yeah your backyard's going to smell like you're cleaning a coffee maker no it's going to smell like the guy in easter eggs <laughs> no this was perfect we eliminated about 90 percent of all the weeds yeah by doing our backyard so that whole 2022 was perfect because what we have to pull eh, it's it's negligible. yeah we need to spray our driveway again so it there's a good for a year. Oh yeah, it lasts about a year, then you have to spray again. But there you go. Right there, that bin, you know, is full, full of weeds and just on top, just some palm fronds that I, I what's worse, away. ants or weeds? Oh ants. Ants, ants. hands down, <laughs> ants. Oh, weeds are gross, but I mean at least you can just, you know, spray them. Mari's then... asking, did they spell Ghirardelli wrong? I don't think they did. No, yeah. they, they were spelled correctly. That's spelled correctly. Yeah. Yeah. I hope they did. Yeah, yeah there's Ghirardelli. 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 Yeah. You know, I'll try and see if I can find that commercial that they used to play here in the Bay Area. Uh, the advertised cookie mixes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll see it, if I can find that one. The singing parrot, wasn't it? It was the singing parrot, yeah. But that's our, that's what happened this last last week. Uh, we're going to take another quick break here. There are a couple of things I need to take uh, and clean up here. You're watching PTV Live. We'll be right back. Oh, no. Oh. That, okay, so that that's file, not going to happen. That file went away, too. But, you know, I'll find it right now. Okay. Oh, my gosh. What happened over there? We unplugged I am so it. Sorry. No, I, I think that pissed yeah. it off. Yeah. We unplugged it, and that's it. And yeah. something happened. But here it goes. Um, I just have to find the file here. This will take me just, I am so sorry, everyone. This will just take like, me a let's moment. Let's format this so we unplug the show and I think it pissed it off. Yeah, but here we go. Make it after all 
You're watching PTV. Sit. Nice puppy. Stay. That's a good puppy. Crocker Bank is giving away this well-trained puppy. He's called a Crocker Spaniel. Just deposit at least $300 in a new or existing savings account, and he's yours. I didn't say lie down. Crocker Bank, the bank that asks you to give us the business, then give us the business. Crocker Spaniels, available while the litter lasts. Remember that commercial, Ben? Crocker yes. Bank was the Fine. first bank I ever dealt with. Yep. Yeah. Crocker Bank no longer exists. It was absorbed by, I think, First Interstate Bank? Which, no, was it? Wells, Wells, Fargo. Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo. Also, First Interstate was also absorbed by That was by also Wells absorbed Fargo. by Wells Fargo. And Crocker was one of the big five or the big four that created the, the railroad big, industry. The big four. Yeah. Big, the well. The rail world, railroad world that we know of today, <laughs> Crocker was one of them. Yeah, these California centric commercials, everyone is scratching their heads. Well, it was yeah. all great. We had great commercials. Our childhood. Yeah, that one was from my childhood. That definitely. I begged my mom to open a savings account for five hundred dollars so we could get that Crocker panel, and she didn't do it. To get the, the dog. Well, we already had the accounts at Crocker. It didn't yeah. matter. Yeah. No. So we had them. Anyway, we used to bank at Crocker. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, Sherry, a little yes. craft time? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, so we have, uh, I believe, the squeaky shoes thing is. Yeah, happening? squeaky shoes are going to start at six twenty. So we want to make sure everybody can get see the final game of all the squeaky shoes. Okay. So we'll be done in the next thirty minutes for people to watch squeaky shoes. Now I'm going to go ahead and give that one a Dougism. Doug's, uh, that's what Doug calls basketball because it just sounds like nothing but squeaky shoes. Squeak, 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 squeak. So we know you guys all want to watch it. So what are we doing? What are we making today, Sherry? A lamp. We are doing a lamp. Oh, that's cool. Oh, let me oh, let's see. It's a full camera. There it is. Oh, that's nice. It's kind of hard to yeah, see. Yeah, let me let, turn let down let the light. Ben turn the light down so that you can see it better. But we're going to do that. And it's got fairy lights in it, so. But oh. I'm going to. Show candle, you a flameless candle. That's fairy lights. Nice. It's Actually, fairy fairy light. Because I wanted the whole thing to shine, not just the bottom. Okay, awesome. let me go ahead and give you your third camera then. I'm going to show you a fail of what I thought we were going to do. And it just, it was all, all kinds of wrong. So even I do bad things. <laughs> it's this candle jar and i don't know that you can see it very well but i used pressed dried pressed flowers with mod podge but the mod podge is really streaky on this yeah i do see that it's very streaky it's very streaky and it's like pretty. this flower right here was bright purple before i put it on oh as was this one right here so what I did was I just threw it in the garbage. And then I thought, well, I need to show them a fail. So that's, that's what I did. <laughs> so we'll harsh. be going back in the garbage. That's well, harsh. <laughs> I got these jars at uh, Michael's. They're just, they're like canning jars, but they're plain. They don't have anything written on them, which is what I wanted. Yeah, you need to prove it. <laughs> don't blame the Mod Podge. It's the crafter. <laughs> Jeez, you're really snarky tonight, Richard. Yeah, he's very surly. <laughs> so at any rate, those were the jars that I used. And then I went ahead and I painted it with white chalk paint all the way around. You you have to use the chalk paint, not acrylic paint, because acrylic paint will uh, pull right off. Chalk paint doesn't. So but I wanted to... 
<laughs> what? Yeah. The chalk paint adheres to the glass. Yes. So what I did oh. was I did that, but I wanted to show you the process that I did. Here's a piece of broken glass. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah. And what I do is I will... Um, Let me get my paint here. This sure. is what Mara's saying that the streaks of Mod Podge are all Richard's fault. <laughs> <laughs> How many coats do you put on? Well, I put one on to adhere the flowers and then one to cover them. And it was just a mess. So at any rate, I'm using this. Let me put the lid back on so that I don't spill paint all over Ben's table. Thank you. Folk art chalk paint is what I used on this one. And what I do is I take a little dabber and I take a little paint and then I just dab it all over the paint, all over the, the glass rather than than right. a brush. Because if you've got a brush, you get the streak marks like yeah. that. So there it is. Yeah, it's a sponge applicator, a, a little dabber. But how yeah, many did you put on this? I did just one on this. Right. So that, that's what it looks like when you start dabbing it so when it dries it kind of gives it a a marbly type effect and so that's that's how i did these yeah richard's taking odds on whether or not you cut your finger on the glass no i won't cut my finger on the glass that gets thrown in the trash yep it does okay so then what i'm going to do is Take the jar, take another dabber, and I'm going to use a dark napkin this time. Sherry, Cynthia is saying that one of the stores at Disney Springs had candle jar decorating, and it looked like they used markers. Yeah, you can do that with Sharpies and um, Sharpies and alcohol on glass. Amazing combination. So what I'm going to do is... Spice. Richie's been spicy all my life. <laughs> so I'm going to use these napkins, which is still kind of a tropical one. These, these have... Um, flamingos. Flamingos on them. They're hard to... Let me turn off the light so that you can see the, the napkin. <laughs> Mar, yes, I do remember Brill Cream. See? Oh this my kind of, goodness. This is what it looks like without, without the, lights. the lights on. <laughs> and this is what it looks like with the lights on. Okay. But you can you yeah, can still I see it there. That it's better in it's, person. It's better in person, yeah. It's blown out on camera. But most napkins come with more than one um one layer on them. And an easy, and you have to have just the top one for decoupaging stuff. So what I like to do sometimes is I'll use a piece of tape and pull it, and it usually will uh, separate. 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 Yeah, separate. There. there, there we go. Oh my goodness! So it makes it very easy to. Uh, to get it rather than fighting with the corner. And then you just peel off. These ones were just two ply. A lot of them will come three ply. So you have to take off all of the, the layers on the back that you're not, you know, cause you need just the front and it makes it really, really um, fragile. So you have to be very careful with it. <laughs> And then I'm just going to cut it in half because I don't need the whole thing. That looks like the pattern on a Hawaiian tropical shirt that Jeff would wear. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Okay, and then what I'm going to do is take a little container. <laughs> Richard says, it's called batting, Sherry. <laughs> What's batting? I guess the backside of those napkins. No, it's not batting. <laughs> batting is what I use in my quilts. Yeah. So I'm going to pour a little bit of, of Mod Podge in here. Uh, do you add water? Nope, I do <laughs> not. 
and then I'll get my, my dabber ready. Oh, I, did I bring my plastic bag? Yes, I did. Good. It was smart. And then I will take the jar and I will dab part of part of it with Mod Podge. Doesn't make great nightlights. <laughs> it what, Doug? They make great nightlights. You blow through batteries like crazy, but and then on the bottom, I don't paint all the way down. I just or Mod Podge it all the way down at the bottom. I just do it as far down until you can't see any glass when it's standing because otherwise it kind of gets stuck. Okay, so then... <laughs> Marge, I think you're right. Sherry does go through a lot of dabblers. And then you take the Mod Podge and just kind of... The napkin. The napkin, rather. And this is one one project that I don't mind if it's a little wrinkled because it does give it a little bit of character. But I have found the easiest way to press it down into place is to get a plastic bag. And I've got just a little snack bag. And just press it down because then it doesn't stick to your fingers and tear. Oh, that's a clever tip because it oozes through. Yeah, it does. It comes right on through. But that's a very good tip. Some people will use saran wrap, but it's hard to get, get control of the saran wrap. So then I just keep going around. Now next week, I'll tell you, we're going to get really messy with Mod Podge. No, it's the week after that. It'll be the week after that. In two weeks. We're going shopping next Monday. Oh, next, yeah. That's night. right. That's a good, good point. As a reminder, everyone, next Go. Monday night, April 15th, will be our annual Dream Book Extravaganza. We will be going through the entire Dream Book from Hallmark and uh, going through all their keepsake ornaments to see what we want to get. So on Friday, when you guys go to your Hallmark to pick up the catalog, post it on the interwebs and the socials to show you got your catalog with the shiny happy face so yeah i want to see everybody following us yeah. i want you to go get your catalogs we want to see them when you do that please tag us let us know that you're doing that you got your everybody go get your dream book your dream book friday morning be there or be square good night Nick. you'll be everybody needs we'll, to we'll get be the done catalog. we'll be done soon so you'll all be able to watch the yeah, uh, squeaky the shoes, shoes game tonight shoes are in 17 minutes <laughs> cynthia yeah you know what this is a good one and this one was it was good we we yeah so, so far it looked good yeah from um, the cursory tertiary cursory cursory for the cursory look that we get that we gave it so we'll definitely be going through it in detail next Monday night on PTV Live. We're very excited about it. This is always one of our favorite shows of the year. Yes. It's a bearish sling. You're like, you guys see how much. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, you know, you add up and you're just like, oy vey. But it's our bailiwick. It's, you know... Okay. It's a word. It's nothing uh, to make fun of. I will of. give that one a Dougism because people do not use that word. Bailiwick? Yeah. Oh, God. People need to get a better vocabulary. <laughs> now, this year's dream book is, it's got some surprises in it. I was surprised we heard when I was. Feel like a girl. I was Actually. editing. I was editing the episode that is currently on of Life with Ben, and it wasn't until I started editing that I saw the page that I had opened up to on camera because I hadn't looked at it, and it had a picture of an ornament that I really, really want, and I hadn't seen it ahead of time. You'll see that on Ben's show this week. Life with Ben is all about that dream book. That just came out last or night. Or actually, not just the dream book, but also uh, 
Well, no, no, no. You did that last week. You you did the the dream book episode this last week, right? Yeah. The uh, yeah. the ornament I, kit. Yeah, the ornament. Yeah, the ornament kit. It comes out Friday morning. Yes, Van. That's a good question. Sorry, I'm late. Do you know if the Hallmark stores have the Wish book yet? It's going to be released Friday, this Friday, April twelfth. The PDF. Whatever. The PDF most likely will be also alive. They're going to be doing. Hallmark's going to be doing a like a live streaming watch party or something first thing Friday to talk about the, the release of the the dream book. And they do that on Facebook. Uh, they do that in the book of faces. Yes. Yeah. So. Okay, so down here on the bottom, you can see where some of it is sticking up rather than trying to get the, the glass. I'll just tuck it down with uh Oh, okay, that's clever. Hodge. And that now, will you get a hair dryer? Uh you can. Um, I did earlier, but I'm not gonna do it with this one. Although I do have my air dryer here, I can give it a quick and then cut off the excess if you don't tear it. <laughs> and you just glob it. And then just yeah, if you can't get your catalog, you really want to get the hard copy. Yeah, um, and, and like the PDF she's, will be like available. she said. I still like the actual catalog rather than online. Yes, having the physical paper yes. to turn the page and actually relish the feeling of the but paper. We're dance. old. We don't do electronic film. <laughs> I, now, I mean, when I get PDF cookbooks, I print them out. Sure. The whole thing, Sherry. Yeah. Question here. Did you know there's a recipe to make your own Mod Podge? Yes. Yes. I've tried it, but it's a pain in the neck, so I just <laughs> it's not worth it. I just buy it. It's easy to go down to Hobby Lobby and get her. So own. then what I do is I just do a little bit inside, and I'm not real particular about it, and right along that lip, and then I just tuck it down in. You want to see what it looks like with the lights? Sure. We have another question. Yeah. Mara is asking, does that pressed napkin make it wobbly? No, it doesn't. It does not make it wobbly at all. Oh, good. So then what I do is I just let it dry. And um, move it over. I can't see. Hold on. Hold on. That's where I joined it. <laughs> Richard, the Christmas gift idea for Sherry, a gift card to Michael's or Joanne. Yeah. Well, Joanne's around by this fall. <laughs> okay, you want to see what that looks like? With the lights, yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's see what they look like with the uh, fairy lights. Well, I'll tell you how I finish it off. Because it's still wet, so I'm not going to bother. Could you show us on the other one how you finished it off? Yeah, I will. Let me present your camera full size. So just hold it up. And... Oh, that's very cool. Oh, that's very nice. I like that. So what, I, what I do is once it's dry, here, get those out of there before they get glued in place with this. Once this is dry, then I take a hula skirt from Dollar Tree. A hula skirt. Hula skirt. Yeah. They have them out now for the summer. I use them a lot in the fall. That's why I got a couple of them. And what I do is I will take off just one hula. Two. Because each one has two, oh. two strips. So I take that. Hold that, please. And then I'll get the second one. And if you want, you could cut it off at the end, but I don't like getting rid of that knot because then they get all loose and it's a mess. I like it. Yeah, it's a good idea for tiki lights. If you don't want open flame, that's not a bad idea. So what I do is I just put four of these together because that's how they come out. <laughs> and then I just tie it around. Let me turn the lights off so you can okay. see. 
quilter. <laughs> Michelle the quilter. Ben is helping. Oh my gosh. Thank you for being snarky too, Michelle. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Richard's happy because what? What? A crouch with both Mod Podge and fairy lights? So then I take, <laughs> take a double whammy. Take it and I wrap it around the lip of the jar, bring it around and tie it into a bow and finish it off that way. But before I do that, instead of using the regular Mod Podge on the top of it to, you know, to give it um, a top coat. I will take it outside and I will spray it with Mod Podge Matte Acrylic Sealer. Oh, clever. She's not doing that in here. Well, and it's not dry enough to do it. But that's what that's what I do with these. Now, let me show you a mistake that I made on this first one. And we'll end with this and what you do to correct it. As I was spraying it my fingernail got into got into it with with the napkin with the napkin you want to show and them? it created a hole right there okay. I, don't know, I don't know if you can see it let me turn off the lights and see No, you can't see it. Can't see it. Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, no, there it is. You snagged it. Right there. Yeah, I see that. So what you do is... Yeah, Richard is snarky tonight. All you need to do is... <laughs> get one of the napkins. Let me get a little piece of tape to separate it. Do this again. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's her little special. Then I will just take a piece of the napkin that kind of matches what where I messed it up. Well, kind of like what you do with Photoshop, Doug. Well, yeah, but a little more sophisticated. <laughs> so it's right there. And... You're just going to match it? I will just cut it. Not necessarily even match it, just so that it kind of looks like the rest of it. And I'll cover it up. And here I will dab the Mod Podge on the back of the napkin before I put it on. <laughs> Mara says she would just turn it around to the back. Yeah. <laughs> no one is going to pick it up once you put the bow on it at the front. This is too much work. <laughs> yeah, but she wants to fix her mistake. And then I may just take oh, another cool. little piece. And put it over it. And just kind of cover it. Now, when this dries, then I'll take it outside and I'll spray it again to to protect it and seal it. Oh, that's great. But that's it. But in two weeks, that's it finished. Okay. Like I said, in two weeks, we're going to get really messy with Mod Podge. Okay, hey, you heard it here, everyone. You too, Richard. Mod Podge this, this uh, two weeks from today. Is it a Christmas craft? What? Is it a Christmas craft? No. It's just, uh, it'll be a summery spring, spring, summer. Um, oh, tiki type. Okay. okay. So it'll be just time appropriate for the year. Yeah. It'll be a tiki, you know, a tiki time. Those are great wedding ideas, you know wedding centerpieces so you can light them up and each one can yeah start. that's a that's a cool idea yeah. you can use them for for you know barbecues and all kinds of stuff i love a it vase. that's a great idea and you don't even need to use napkins you can use fabric as well yeah richard so, coming to california yeah that is in the talks actually 
That is in the talks. Well, everyone, thank you so much. We're done in time for you to go enjoy, enjoy. if you are so inclined to watch the basketball game tonight. That is starting in about five minutes. We'll yeah. be hitting up the moment of groovy coming up right now. And uh, we're going to go eat our, our pot roast with carrots and potatoes that's been in the crock pot all day. And we're going to go warm up some leftovers. So, yeah. Because we've got a lot of that. Yes, Richard says this will be my second year at the villa for Christmas. Right. Indeed, it's going to be wonderful. Yeah. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We'll be back next Monday night for our annual Dream Book show. We're looking forward to it. Tell your family and friends this is going to be fun. We'll see who spends the most money this year on Hallmark. It's not going to be me this year. <laughs> We will see. Oh, how we keep on thinking. Oh, Jean, thank you. Oh, thank you, Jean. A two dollar super chat from Jean. Jean, Jean, thank you, Jean. A great, great. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, no, you're too funny. <laughs> Oy vey. Yeah. If, you know, if I can't take a little razzing on camera, then I have no business being in the live stream at all. Yeah, Ben is far from being a snowflake. That's for sure. <laughs> Everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We'll be back next Monday night with the Dream Book annual Dream Book show. Hallmark, we're Hallmark Christmas. We're already in Christmas mode. Okay, everyone. I can't believe it. <laughs> Enjoy your evening. Make it magical. Have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. I'm Arnie. I'm Doug. I'm Ben. I'm Sherry. You've been watching PTV Live on Pepper Tree Villa, and now it's time for your moment of groovy. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>